Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have this vintage Toshiba Pentium 2 laptop to take apart. This laptop is really thick and heavy, and it probably cost a lot back in the day. You can see that this laptop is pretty damaged, so it's pretty much beyond repair. You have a floppy drive here on the front. You have some LEDs here, disk drive. You have a USB port underneath this tiny little cover. Here's a PS2 port. Here's our power connector. This is our VGA video out. We have a serial connector here. This is a connector here so you can connect it to a docking station. This is our parallel port here, which is for connecting it to a printer. Here's our power button. We have some sort of locking mechanism here. We have expansion slots here. And we have this weird little lock thing here to lock it, I guess. Here we have an RJ11 connector, and that's it. Here's the back. First we're going to take out the RAM, which requires me to take off these two screws. Alright, here's our single stick of RAM. I believe this is a 128 megabyte stick. This here is the battery, which comes out by sliding this piece of plastic here and pulling it out. Here's our battery. Look at those nice big gold connectors there. That's nice. This battery is only 400 milliamp hour, which is crazy considering most phones have that much battery capacity. Next, I'm going to take out the hard drive, which is underneath this cover here. And we have one screw holding it on. Now we can just pull it out. Here's our hard drive. It is an IBM Travel Star. You can see this hard drive is 6.4 gigabytes. Alright, so the next thing to do to get this apart is to take off this little strip of trim here. And that will allow me to take the keyboard off. So this can just be popped off pretty easily. Just like that. Then we can take off the keyboard. There is a connector up here, which I can just undo. Here's our keyboard. Once I've taken this screw off, I can take this piece off here. Here's a little plastic piece. And here's the connectors for the LCD screen. Although this material here looks and feels like magnesium, it's actually just magnesium coated plastic. That is so they can actually ground the whole entire chassis the reason for doing this is so the plastic itself can be used as an EMI shield. Alright, so this module here is a modem module. You can see that there is a small two-wire connector here that goes to the RJ11 connector here. So let's take out these three screws. Alright, now we can pull it out. You can see there's a little board-to-board -board connector right here to connect it to the main motherboard. So let's take this plastic cover off to see what's on the circuit board underneath. Here we have a isolation transformer to isolate the input lines from uh, power surges and voltage spikes. Here we have a custom ASIC. This is for modulating and demodulating the signals coming in through the phone jack. Alright, so the next thing to do is take off this whole top plastic chassis here. I have to take out a whole bunch of screws on the top here and I have to take out all the screws here on the back. All right, now I can get this cover off. Now I have to unconnect a whole bunch of these connectors here. So our screen and top cover has come off all in one assembly. On the back here we can see the speaker modules. And these connectors here are for the display. We have the little board here for the two buttons. Here's our little mylar piece for the buttons. Now I'm going to take out these speakers. Here's one of our two speakers. You can see it's in this little module here. You can see they've even, they've even went to the effort to include a little port here. You can see that that goes into the little enclosure here. 
It looks like they had their own separate little grill here for the port. You can see that it lines up perfectly just like that. All right, so I'm gonna put this screen to the side for now and we'll take it apart near the end of the video. All right, so here's what the rest of the laptop looks like. You can see we have our disk drive here and this is our CPU assembly. We'll get to that later. Here in the corner, we have this little circuit board here that has our LED light indicators on it and our headphone and microphone ports. You can see here that we have two backup batteries on here, which is really strange. We have one little tiny one here, just little two button cells in there. So here's our second backup battery. You can see this one is a six cell battery. It is 7.2 volts, 40 milliamp hour. And just like the other one, it's made of little button cell batteries. Okay, to get this disc drive out, I have to take out this screw here. And then I can lift it up and unconnect it. And there's our disk drive. Here's our little RJ11 connector. You can see they've even put a little ferrite bead on it. All right, so the next thing is to take off this floppy drive. There is one screw here holding it on. All right, here's our floppy drive. Here's the back of it. You can see this is where the hard drive went in this little protective aluminum case. Now that that's off, I can take off this little board here that was connecting the hard drive. You can see we have our power wires here. You can see that they're a little bit thicker of a gauge. And we can just unconnect that. Then this here is our data connector. And it looks like we just have one screw holding it on. And after taking off one screw, I can pull this little board off. Now that we've got everything else off, we can take out the motherboard. There's a whole bunch of screws holding it on and it should come out. All right, let's take this motherboard off. And here's the plastic chassis. All right, so here's our CPU module. I believe this should just come off. We have two big connectors on the bottom that connect it to the motherboard here. And this is just our little CPU card. We have a little fan here, some uh, aluminum posts in here to increase the surface area for heat dissipation. So I've taken out all the screws and we can see what's underneath. Here's our heat sink. You can see there's more bumps on it to increase the surface area. And here's our CPU module. I have no idea why they put this little piece of aluminum between the actual heat sink and the CPU, but it's actually riveted on, so I'm gonna have to go drill those out. Okay, I've got these rivets drilled out, so we can take off this little heat sink here. Off. Whoa, that's a lot of thermal paste. They used way too much thermal paste here. Look at all that. Whoever did this put way too much on. So here's what it looks like with all the thermal paste cleaned up. Here is our 400 megahertz single core Pentium 2 processor. This here is our North Bridge. On the back here is our high speed interconnect so it can be connected to the motherboard. You can see we have some more power management stuff. We have a voltage regulator here. This is all for supplying power to the, the CPU and the north bridge here. You can see here on the back of the heat sink where they've machined the metal so it fits on the CPU die very nicely. All right, let's take a closer look at our motherboard here. Right here we have some onboard RAM. We have a ROM chip here. This chip here is a microcontroller for the parallel printer port, which is right here. On the back here, we have some more soldered on RAM. 
This chip here made by Toshiba is the PCIMCA controller. You can tell because it's located right beneath the PCMCIA slots. This chip right above it is our sound chip. This is our GPU here made by Trident. And here is our Intel Southbridge. Okay, so the last thing to do is to take apart this screen. All right, to take apart this screen, we have to take out the screws that are located underneath these little stickers here. Okay, now it should come apart pretty easily. This board right here is the driver board for the fluorescent backlight. Since this is a really old screen, it uses a fluorescent backlight and not an LED backlight like newer laptops. Right here is the high voltage connector going to the fluorescent tube. And this black box here is a transformer for stepping up the voltage. And here's what we got on the back. Here's our data cable going to the boards. This board here on the right is the row driver board. And this board here is the column driver board. And those two boards work to coordinate the pixels and create a picture on the screen. And yeah, so that's about it for this screen. There's not really much to it. Alright guys, so that's about it for this video. I hope you guys learned something, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.